The Tragic Fate of Kayla Rowland Chapter 1. A Glimpse into Innocence In the quiet town of Mount Morris, Michigan, a small community went about its daily routine. Among the residents was a lively six-year-old girl named Kayla Rowland. With her vibrant smile and contagious laughter, she had a way of brightening the lives of those around her. Kayla, an innocent child, loved playing with her friends at Buell Elementary School and had dreams as big as the world itself. In Mount Morris Township, Michigan, near Flint, a tragic incident occurred at Buell Elementary School in the Beecher Community School District. Kayla Rowland, a young girl, lost her life when she was fatally shot by a first-grade male student who was six years old. The boy's father, Diedrich Owens, was incarcerated for violating his parole, having previously been convicted of possession of cocaine with intent to distribute and burglary. During this time, the boy resided with his mother, Tamarla, and his eight-year-old brother. Tamarla faced financial hardship, leading to an eviction from their home. She struggled to make ends meet with her two jobs under Michigan's welfare-to-work program, earning a meager dollar 175 weekly wage. Consequently, both boys found themselves sharing a single sofa as their makeshift bed at their uncle's residence. Unfortunately, the uncle's house, where they stayed, was known as a crack house, characterized by frequent gun-for-drug exchanges. It was in this environment that the child stumbled upon a loaded Davis Industries P32.32 caliber handgun concealed beneath some blankets. Tragically, the circumstances aligned in such a way that the boy had access to this dangerous weapon, resulting in the devastating loss of Kayla's life. The young boy in question had a history of behavioral challenges, leading to frequent disciplinary actions. His misconduct, which involved swearing, making obscene gestures, pinching and hitting, resulted in him being kept back after school on a regular basis. Disturbingly, he had also recently stabbed a girl with a pencil. Incidents involving physical aggression were not uncommon for this child. A fellow classmate, Chris Boaz, recounted an occasion when the boy punched him simply because he refused to give him a pickle. Furthermore, there were previous instances where the boy had targeted Kayla Rowland, subjecting her to attacks. The day before the tragic shooting, he had attempted to kiss her, but was rejected. On the fateful day itself, tensions escalated further. The boy and his brother engaged in a confrontation with Boaz's uncle, resulting in a heated dispute. During this altercation, the boy went so far as to threaten the uncle with a firearm, indicating a disturbing level of aggression and disregard for the safety of others. Chapter 2 The Unthinkable Tragedy On February 29, 2000, a harrowing incident unfolded when the young boy brought a firearm and a knife to school. Amidst a class transition, in the presence of a teacher and 22 fellow students, he tragically took the life of six-year-old Kayla Rowland while they were ascending the stairs. Before pulling the trigger, he uttered the chilling words, I don't like you. The bullet struck Kayla's right arm, piercing a vital artery and causing grave harm. Afterward, he disposed of the handgun by discarding it in a wastebasket and fled to a nearby restroom. The boy sought refuge in the corner of the restroom, but a vigilant teacher discovered his hiding place, leading to his prompt apprehension by the police. Sadly, despite efforts to save her, Kayla Rowland was pronounced dead at 10.29 a.m. EST while experiencing cardiac arrest at Hurley Medical Center. The assailant remained in custody until the Genesee County Family Independence Agency could assess the most suitable placement for him. Ultimately, he and his two younger siblings were entrusted to the care of an aunt. Chapter 3. Searching for Answers The news of Kayla's untimely death spread like wildfire, sending shockwaves across the nation. The tragedy left parents, educators, and lawmakers grappling for answers. How could such a horrific incident happen? What could have been done to prevent it? These questions echoed in the minds of everyone touched by the heartbreaking event. Law enforcement officials tirelessly investigated the circumstances surrounding the shooting. It was discovered that the young boy who brought the gun to school had been exposed to violence and neglect in his home environment, leaving him emotionally scarred and desensitized. 
The incident shed light on the urgent need to address the underlying issues of child welfare and gun control. Chapter 4. A Community in Mourning The days following Kayla's death were filled with inconsolable grief and an outpouring of support for her family. The tight-knit community of Mount Morris rallied together, offering condolences, prayers, and acts of kindness. The tragic event brought neighbors closer, emphasizing the importance of cherishing and protecting the lives of their children. Chapter 5. The Legal Consequences As the community grappled with grief, the legal system sought to bring justice for Kayla's death. The young boy who pulled the trigger became the youngest murder suspect in the history of the United States. The legal proceedings brought attention to the complexities of holding a child accountable for such a grievous act. Ultimately, due to his age, the young boy could not be charged as an adult. Instead, he entered the juvenile justice system, where he received counseling and rehabilitation services, aiming to address the trauma he had experienced. Chapter 6. Legacy of a Precious Life Kayla Rowland's death marked a turning point in the national conversation about school safety, child welfare, and gun control. The incident sparked a renewed dedication to preventing violence in schools and ensuring the emotional well-being of children across the country. Kayla's family, devastated by their loss, became vocal advocates for change. They established the Kayla Rowland Foundation, dedicated to promoting awareness of gun violence and implementing preventative measures in schools. Through their tireless efforts, they hoped to ensure that no other child or family would suffer a similar fate. Epilogue. The Healing Begins. In the years that followed, the wounds of Mount Morris slowly began to heal, but the memory of Kayla Rowland lived on. Her spirit served as a constant reminder of the preciousness of life and the urgent need for action. Communities across the nation redoubled their efforts to create safe spaces for children to learn. During that period, Kayla Rowland was tragically considered the youngest victim of a school shooting in the history of the United States. This unfortunate record remained until the devastating events of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in December 2012. Just a day after Kayla's untimely death, another shooting spree occurred in Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, claiming the lives of three individuals and injuring two others. The Wilkinsburg incident prompted U.S. President Bill Clinton to advocate for stricter gun control laws, citing Rowland's case as an example of the urgent need for action. The public sentiment towards addressing gun violence was strongly influenced by these successive tragedies. As a result of declining enrollment and financial strain, Buell Elementary School was compelled to close its doors in 2002. The campus faced further misfortune when it fell victim to arson in 2005, resulting in significant damage. Eventually, in 2009, the decision was made to demolish the premises, bringing an end to its physical existence. And that brings us to the end of another exciting video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, diving into this fascinating topic together. Before we wrap things up, I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for joining me on this journey. Now, if you haven't already, I kindly ask you to consider hitting that like button right now. It's a simple gesture that lets me know you enjoyed this video and helps the channel reach a wider audience, allowing me to continue creating even more valuable content.